if you quantify the inductive energy gain, um, and that is a complicated experiment, and we demonstrated the inductive energy gain um, in several ways. Um, we did static inductance testing, um, and Max has just shown you dynamic inductance testing. Where you end up is, is that the very act of putting energy into the coil in an Orbo motor returns more energy out, and that energy is in the form of about an 8% inductance gain and the heat associated with the system. Um, as you will see on the thermal camera, um, any system that has current flowing through it will generate heat. And so we calculate the inductance energy by removing the joule heating from the energy put into the system, which is basically the integral of VI. The other test that we did that um, there was no audience for, but if anybody was watching on Livestream 3, we did a week-long soap test. And effectively what we did is we ran this system, um, it wasn't actually this system, but a similar system, um, for a week-long week um, test. And before starting the test, we measured all the magnetic components uh, using a Gauss meter, and we measured them afterwards. We also calculated, and there's very standard calculations, the amount of energy contained in the magnetic components themselves. So we have four sets of rotor magnets, and we threw in the bearing magnets for good measure. And the inherent energy contained in the permanent magnets in the system is calculated at 2.3 joules. Um, this surprises a lot of people, but there isn't an awful lot of domain energy in a magnet. If you look at the amount of excess energy produced, and I stress excess, that is the differential between input and output um, during the week-long test, we generated 21 kilojoules of excess energy. Um, and we measured the components afterwards, and there was absolutely no degradation of the components of the system itself. And what this demonstrates in a, in a very dramatic way, the numbers from 2 to 21,000 are very large, is that the drawing of excess energy from an Orbo system is not in any way related to the component parts itself, and that's obviously a very key point. So the final um, bit of the experiment that we're going to conduct is to actually show you um, a live system, which we have here in front of us, and to show you the classic more energy out than in. And I keep saying that the wrong, wrong way around, so you'll forgive me if I do. Um, <laughs> And what you see on the system here is something very similar that you've seen if you've been watching any of these videos before. It's a rotor with four sets of permanent magnets. We have four coils. Um, we're using an optical switch to fire at certain angular positions. Um, we're providing a DC current into the system. And the optical switch turns the current on when the magnets are at top dead center and turns them off maybe 20, 30 degrees later. Um, <clears throat> connected to the system, um, in addition to the input coils, is a pickup coil, which is this one here. Um, this pickup coil is capturing some of the kinetic energy of the rotor, or the motional energy of the rotor, and converting it into a voltage current. Um, for this test, we've shorted out um, the, um, the coil, so it's effectively acting as a heater. We're measuring two things. We're measuring the input current with um, a current probe, and we're measuring the input voltage with a differential voltage probe, and we're measuring the output current. And if you look at the scope traces, what you will see in the brown scope trace is the energy of the output coil, and that is basically I squared R and that represents um, the heat produced by the system. The purple trace is the net electrical energy put into the system, uh, net of joule heating. Um, you can work the ratios, it's about three to one input to output. This does not include the energy that the rotor itself is doing in terms of work, that is simply direct electrical in to out net of joule heating. Um, at that speed, I think we're probably doing about one and a half to two millijoules a revolution, and we're operating, I think, at about 1,500 RPM, if I can check that. Yeah, 
1300 RPM. Um, of course, there's a lot more energy that we could capture, and as a simple test, what I'm going to do is simply to push the coil in closer. You'll notice, if we can just uh, focus on the scope, guys, that the output energy increases. So if I take it away, the input energy is remaining the same, and the input energy is remaining the same because we have no counter EMF. Um, so there's no change in the input energy um, due to the speed of the, of, the, of the motor, but as I can do that, I can basically go off the Richter scale. So a lot of people keep questioning how efficient is Orbo, and the answer is how efficient do you really want it to be? And it comes down to physical and practical design um, issues. So, actually, you just hold the, the fix the uh, pickup coil in again. If you look at the system as really being two systems, um, what we have is, in this case, four sets of coils and a drive circuit. And if you were to analyze, which is the inductance energy, this steady state part of the system, you'll find that you're sitting at about 108% efficiency. Um, what this is really demonstrating is that there's no coupling between the electric energy that's put into the system and the rotational energy of the, um, of the, system, of the uh, rotor itself. If you look at the efficiency of the rotor, in essence, you could call it infinity since there's no direct energy transfer between the steady state element of the system and the active element of the system. If I was to show you and say, we'll give us some specific numbers and people are more than welcome to come and play with this afterwards, but we did this test earlier today. Doing live experiments is always a dangerous game. And if you took this, which was from earlier today, the net efficiency during this run, electrical to electrical, I need to be clear about that, is 327%. And that excludes any work done by the system against um, friction, which is limited because we're using um, magnetic bearings and um, air resistance. Obviously, this is a experiment being done by us and our test equipment, and we're aware that some people will have concerns about that. However, we've tried to present this in a cogent way and in a transparent way, and I would encourage anybody who is in the audience to come and have a look at the system afterwards. However, what we're also offering is from Wednesday of this week, anybody can book and come in and test this with our engineers. All that we ask is that you book it. Um, the details will be on our website from, I think, tomorrow morning. Um, you can come in. You can bring your own test equipment. We've decided to extend our stay here in the waterways until Friday the 26th of February to enable that. And that is really the last offering from Storm in terms of validating the technology. And we can really do no, do no more than that. What we are about, um, for those who are suspicious or uh, perhaps um, cautious of our own experiments. But what we're really about is getting this technology into the hands of the development community. And on Monday, we open our, our developer forum. And our developer forum is the place where you can learn and understand and implement Orbo. Um, it's being opened on Monday for a, a group of commercial organizations who have pre-applied and it will be open to the rest of the developer community the following week. Um, all the test data that we have generated, it's a digital scope, is stored. Um, it will be documented along with various other third-party tests that have happened. And that will be available on our website within a few days. We're going to take a couple of days break. I hope that's understood. Um, but it will be up on our website. And anybody can get the data, analyze it, and talk to us about it. And that, folks is pretty much that.